has a beginning and it has an end. But people are saved in all generations, in all dispensations, the same way. Um, on the basis of the blood of Christ uh, and through faith. Uh, one of the critiques of dispensationalism, which dispensationalists have repeatedly said, no, we don't believe that, is that we hold the seven different ways of salvation. Um, we don't hold the seven different ways of salvation. We hold to one way of salvation. Uh, and Paul proves this in Romans when he says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Abraham was saved. We have record uh, of his salvation in Genesis, of when he believed God and God counted his faith as righteousness. Now, what did Abraham believe? Did he believe that Jesus died for his sins on the cross and rose again on the grave the third day? No, he didn't believe that, but he believed the revelation and the promises of God and that God was true. And so he had faith in God. Now, the basis of his salvation was Christ died and rose again. So that still paid for Abraham's sins, though Abraham's sins predated Christ's death and resurrection. Um, but he was saved by faith in the revelation that God gave to him. So we aren't talking about salvation in that sense. Um, salvation throughout the ages is the same. Uh, it's always based on Christ's work and, and by faith in God's promises, God's word. Um, so that's the church. So during the tribulation, the church will be in heaven uh, for those seven years, roughly seven years, with Christ. Um, and then we come back to the earth with Christ at the end of that time. All right, so what is a dispensation? A dispensation is a way in which God accomplishes his purposes or his plan, you can almost use the word plan there, for his glory in the affairs of mankind, which includes new revelation from God concerning man's responsibilities. Okay, so um, I guess I cut a lot. Well, no, it's 11.44. But questions or any, anything that you want me to go into a little bit more detail? Example. Uh, correct. Yeah, in innocence, there was no, there was no, um, there was no sin from which. Consciousness, I mean, you think of Noah, but evidence for other people during conscience? Well, Seth is usually pointed to as an example in Genesis 5. So Genesis 5 is, uh, is an interesting chapter, actually, even though it's a genealogy. Um, but I think it's, um, or is it the end of four? Cain, that's all Cain. Um, there's a phrase about, is it what? Oh, yes, thanks. So at the end of chapter four, um, after Cain had killed Abel, and we go through Cain's line, which is uh, all bad. Uh, verse 25, Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. Uh, for she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. Now, you have to imagine Eve in this situation. So after the fall, Eve is promised in judgment that she's going to have a child who's going to fix the problem that she just created. Okay. Good. So what, what happens? She has Cain. Here, here's the one. He's going to fix the problem. And then she has Abel, you know, and, but Cain's going to fix the problem. She had a son. Cain kills Abel. All right, Cain's not going to fix the problem. Abel can no longer fix the problem. All right, so despair again, right? So then she has Seth. And she thinks that Seth is going to fix the problem. Now, Seth doesn't, but in verse 26, we get to, um, to Seth also was, uh, a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. At that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And so in Seth's line, which traces to Noah, we seem to have a line of faith. Now, it all go, still goes awry by the time we get to chapter 6. 
um, because then all men are doing what's evil, always uh, in their heart. So perhaps Seth and early part of Seth's line, uh, we could say that um, as well. So, yeah, in Matthew, it's actually in Matthew, so maybe we'll look at it um, in our next series. But the, Jesus is talking, ab the, it's towards the end, I don't know if I can put my finger on the verse, um, because they ask him the questions. I've got the right passage, although now I'm wondering if I don't have the right passage. Um, Jesus is telling them about the end times. They ask him about the end times. And Jesus says, um, there are some here, because here's the sign, but there are some here who won't see it. I will have to look that up specifically. Because um, I'm not in the right one. Um, yeah, I think that was a, a different one. Uh, but yeah, the, it is a question as to when Jesus says, there are some of you who won't taste death until you see the sign. The, some uh, question, what is the sign that Jesus is referring to in that passage? Um, but I have to look that. I would have to look that up. So I got the right context. Right, there's the sense when we talked about God's providence over all creation, there's a sense in which God is King of kings and Lord of lords now. Uh, but there is also um, a sense in which God, there is a specific kingdom for Israel in the future that is going to last for a thousand years. So there's a dual sense of, well, it's almost like three different senses. There's God reigning over all the universe. There's also the way in which God's kingdom is on earth, so it's, which is similar. We often talk about um, the kingdom of God on earth when we talk about dispensations. Because uh, how is God mediating out his kingdom? Sometimes the way dispensations is talked about is how is God mediating his kingdom through man, Psalm 8, on the earth? And so, and Psalm 2. Um, so he's given man the responsibility of ruling in his stead uh, on the earth. So what does that look like at different points in time as he does that? Now, uh, the way Christ talks about it at some points in time, it seems like, well, that reign um, of man working out the kingdom on earth is um, spiritual in nature as it pertains to the earth. Uh, so we have God ruling over everything, the universe, King of kings and Lord of lords. We have him mediating his kingdom through mankind on the earth, which sometimes looks spiritual. But then we also have the millennial kingdom, uh, which is a very specific kingdom, and eventually grows and takes over the whole earth. And Christ himself is the mediator of that kingdom on earth. And I think David as well as a co-ruler um, on earth during that period of time. And that's in Matthew 13, where he talks about um, the kingdom starting and then spreading out over the world, but it's a very physical, uh, I take that to be a very physical reality, not a spiritual reality. Yeah, we could have a, we could have a whole series on that topic, probably, uh, just on the kingdom.
All right. Well, uh, the other Sunday schools have let out, I think, so we'll and call it there. But uh, like I said, next week, Lord willing, uh, we'll start in Matthew, or, uh, a new series on Matthew. So let's close in a word of prayer and we'll be on our way. Father, we are again thankful for your word. We're thankful that we can read it and understand it, that you have opened our minds and our hearts to it, though some Hearts are difficult to understand, even as the Apostle Peter admits. Uh, Father, we are thankful that you uh, have given to us and revealed to us your plan, uh, not only for the world, but for us, that we might walk in it, that we might glorify you in uh, working it out in this, uh, in this life. And Father, it reminds us again that you have given to each one of us um, you have a plan for each one of us and something to fulfill here in this world. And as long as we are here, we have something to live for that we might glorify you uh, in our day-to-day -day lives and what you have given to us. Uh, and so, Father, we pray that you would uh, help us as we live out our lives to consider how we are glorifying you in, in what we do and what we accomplish, the, the choices that we make, the the plans that we, we try to make, even as Pastor preached this morning, on vows, uh, those things which we set in our heart to do, that we would be considering you, you and your glory first and foremost. We ask that you would uh, help this to be a reality for us tomorrow morning when we wake up, as we, as we uh, live out each day which you give to us as a gift. And we pray these things in our Savior's name. Amen.